Hi everyone! Happy weekend! It's me, Attorney Quisigil Martinez Laksamana and I'm here to discuss with you uh, the updates about capital gains tax. Well, I already posted a video of this before pero masyado yatong maikli because pinagkasa ako talaga siya sa isang short video. Anyway, ano nga ba ang capital gains tax at sino, sino ba dapat ang magbayad dyan? Of course, laging tanong sa akin ng mga kliyente ko, ano bang nasa batas, attorney? Ito ang nasa batas. Okay, let me read it to you. Para malaman natin, sino ba talaga ang dapat magbayad sa capital gains tax? Under 24, Section 24D of the NIRC, um, the capital gains tax is a final tax of 6% based on the gross selling price or current fair market value as determined in accordance with Section 6E of this code. Whichever is higher is hereby imposed upon capital gains presumed to have been realized from the sale, exchange, or other disposition of real property located in the Philippines. Classified as capital assets including pacto de retro sales, and other form of conditional sales by individuals including estates and trusts, provided that the tax liability, if any, on gains from sales or other dispositions of real property to the government or any political subdivisions or in agency to government-owned or controlled corporation shall be determined either under Section 94A under this subsection, at the option of the taxpayer. Hindi na yan ba? I'm sure hindi nyo naipintihan. Kasi magulo. So, hirap aralin. Pero, if you will remind what I just read right now, did you hear the word seller or buyer? Hindi, di ba? Kasi hindi naman yan tina talaga sinabi sa batas kung sino ba dapat ang magbayad ng capital gains. Pero, According kay BIR, dinify niya ang capital gains tax as a tax imposed on the gains presumed to have been realized by the seller from the sale, exchange, and other disposition of capital assets located in the Philippines including pacto de retro and other forms of conditional sales. Okay, ganito yan. Before, uh... Ang usual practice is kapag sinabi ni seller na ang contract price is for example 1 million, yun na yung neto na matatanggap niya. Hindi mo yung pwedeng bawasan, hindi mo siya pwedeng singilin sa transfer fees, documentary stamp tax or capital gains tax. Bakit? Kasi yun ang usapan ninyo eh. Wala naman nga talaga kasi sinabi sa batas na dapat siya yung magbayad ng ng mga yon, ng mga transfer fees. Wala rin naman sinabi sa batas na si buyer dapat ang magbayad ng lahat ng fees sa pag-transfer sa kanya. Kaya, ang mga pagbabayad nito ay nagiging in accordance with the agreement of the parties. So, swerte ni seller kung si buyer ako niya lahat. Swerte rin ni buyer kung ako ni seller lahat. Pero most of the time, it is the buyer who bears all the fees for transfers dahil siya yung interesado may pangalan sa kanya yung property. Ang gusto lang naman ni seller, makabenta. At makuha yung pera ng, ni buyer. And, uh, ayaw na nila yung sakit ng ulo regarding payments sa pag-transfer. So, that's the custom before. Ngayon, dahil laging may buyer and seller sa office ko, I notice one trend. At ngayon, talagang pinaglalaban na ng mga buyers na hindi, sa'yo ang capital gains tax. Kay seller ang capital gains tax. Kasi nasa batas yan eh. Sinabi ni BIR. Sabi ni BIR, the capital gains tax is a tax imposed on the gains presumed to have been realized by the seller. So, dapat sa'yo yan. O, syempre, ang hirap naman maningil ng capital gains kung hindi mo, ah, ng pambayad sa capital gains tax. 
kung hindi mo siya sisingilin. So, ano nga yun ang trend? Ganito yung ginagawa ng mga buyer. If the selling price is 1 million, ang ibabayad na lang nila is 940,000 pesos. Bakit? Tinanggal na agad nila yung 6% dun sa 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 contract price para ibang bayad kay BIR. Clever, di ba? Well, uh, that is the trend that I noticed recently and mukhang nagbabago na ang uh, usual practice noon na si buyer ang nagbabayad lahat. Dahil uh, nai-impose na ni buyer kapag alam nila yung batas at alam nilang isite kung ano ang batas na nagsasabing seller kung ano ang basis kung ano ang nagsasabi na ang seller dapat ang magbayad ng capital gain tax o syempre hindi na siya may ni seller. Pero of course, if hindi nyo alam, si buyer ang magbe-bear ng lahat ng cost. Okay, that's all for now. That's my tip for the day. Know the law. Know the basis para alam nyo ipaglaban kung sino ba dapat ang magbayad ng mga taxes na ito. Anyway, if you have any questions, just feel free to comment below and um, I will freely answer them in my free time. That's all for now. Thank you, everyone. Again, it's me. I'm Attorney Chris Martinez Taksamana. And uh, happy weekend.